Hello and welcome to another collection update video. I think this is the uh, seventh one. At least it's the one for uh, December anyway. Um, I haven't really bought a heap, um, you know, coming into the Christmas period, you know, stuff like that. Um, just, uh, yeah, I have a few things, but not a huge amount. Um, probably about 15 CDs and about three vinyls and um, a box set. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I'll just be uh, going through these and hopefully find something interesting um, in this group of things. Um, yeah, straight off the bat, I'll go with... Um, oh, and also, if there's any overlap with previous videos, um, if I've shown something... Uh, with this one, I sort of struggled to think, oh, what have I got? I went through my Discogs current, um, my, my latest uh, acquisitions, but um, for some reason, I just kept on thinking, oh, I might have shown that in a previous video etc so um if i have shown something in the last video just uh it's not the end of the world um okay first thing is the uh this thing here the celtic frost uh dance macabre box set um this sort of uh came to the shop that i've been buying my cds and stuff from uh first um and then the vinyl thing came in later so i just picked up the cd versions um and really impressed with it. I think it's it's great. Um, I mean, over the years, I've um, owned um, different sort of Celtic Frost CDs. And at the moment, I don't... Actually, no, I've got a reissue of uh, To Mega Therion. But it's got this strange uh, version of Jewel Throne that absolutely bugs me. So I rarely listen to it. Um, I've never been able to find a version of To Mega Therion that um, sounds like the version I had in the 90s. And... In, it didn't change with this either because it sounds pretty different. Um, but overall, this is a great box set. Um, I won't bring everything out. Um, I will just uh, sort of read it off the back here. So we've got Morbid Tales to Mega Therion into the Pandemonium, Emperor's Return, and the Grave Hill Bunker rehearsals on Digipack format. Uh, we've got a 40 page book, which I was really interested in checking out. Um, with interviews with Tom G and Reed St. Mark. Um, really, really good uh, book and an interesting read, um, especially about, you know, how they were sort of written off with Hellhammer and but almost like how well-planned they were, meticulous in like their uh, planning of albums and um, especially Tom, you know, everything was sort of written out and just just very meticulous about what they were doing and also how they had permission to do um, or to use the artwork that Geiger um, allowed them to use for to Mega Therion. They had that earlier, but felt that the material wasn't up to scratch and they wanted to have the best material to represent the great art artwork they had, which I thought was a very mature decision for a bunch of young guys at the time. So they were very uh yeah when you think of a lot of bands you know these days or just in general people are just willing to like bang 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 and and just put out substandard stuff and not even really think things through um it seemed pretty obvious that they were very um it was just everything was just very well thought through with what they were doing for the most part um Sound wise on these, uh, to make, uh, sorry, uh, Morbid Tales sounds fantastic. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what they've done to these, uh, recordings. Uh, to Mega Therion sounds even different to the, uh, version that I actually still have of To Mega Therion. Um, but probably a bit warmer. Um, see, when I, I'm used to the version that I had back in the 90s, which had a very, um, how would I put it? Not trebly, but just it's quite a cold sound. This one sounds a lot warmer, definitely different sounding than I'm used to um, into the Panamodium. I've never actually owned it before. I was never, when I did listen to it, uh, I was never a huge fan of it, but listening to it since I've got this box set, it has been an enjoyable um, experience actually. can hear a lot of um, influences or, you know, where bands were influenced from that album, particularly um, some of like the, uh, the Doom death scene of England and stuff like that, My Dying Bride, Paradise Lost, etc. Um, yeah. Um, what can I say about it? A lot of people have probably done videos about it and done unboxings and all that kind of stuff. 
Um, so if you're interested, check out any of that sort of stuff on YouTube. But um, really impressed with it. And I think it's well worth getting if you don't have that material or you're just a collector and want to have everything by Celtic Frost. All right, to the regular CDs now. Um, oh, yeah, sort of. Uh, this one's not metal. I just had to get it because for nostalgia reasons. Um, it's a 10 CD box by ZZ Top. Um, and our, our, a band that um, means a lot to me as far as my youth. Um, got into them through my dad. And yeah, it's very nostalgic music for me. Big fan of their album, The Guelo. Used to listen to that one a lot um, as a kid prior to getting into the heavier side of um, metal. You know, I got into ACDC and Metallica quite early, but was listening to a lot of like this sort of stuff and Pink Floyd and Leonard Skinner and stuff like that. So yeah, this is good. 10 albums up until Recycler in 1990. So it's got all their classic stuff and I'm very happy to have that. Not really fitting for this channel, but fuck it. All right. Um, I think it was in the last video I was sort of acquiring quite a few Rotting Christ CDs and I'm still keeping the ball rolling there. Um, here we have Triarchy of the Lost Lovers. Um, yeah, it, it's sort of strange for a band, uh, Rotting Christ, you know, size and you know, they've never been the biggest band or most popular, but, you know, they've been on some big labels and stuff, you know, Century Media. Um, and their stuff can be quite hard to find and very expensive, especially albums like Chronos uh, or um, even this. Uh, Genesis also, all on Century Media, because they obviously haven't bothered to um, repress them or anything like that. Um, and I'm not sure why Season of Mist haven't sort of had the... Uh, they seem to re-release everything else, but they haven't gone through and done any of the sort of Rotting Christ stuff from that period and any of the Rotting Christ stuff that has been reissued earlier of the early material seems to have gone through Peaceville. But um, yeah, glad to have Triarchy. Um, uh, it seems to be highly rated out of those really earlier albums. Um, I know at the least. Um, I still prefer a dead poem over this, uh, but... I can see where people are coming from. It's very, that the production was definitely upped a lot on this one compared to non-Serbian, which, you know, um, had that typical uh, 90s Greek black metal sound uh, recorded at Storm Studios. Uh, so yeah, this was at um, stage one, is it? By Andy Klassen, who's done a lot of stuff. Um, probably one of the earlier sort of extreme metal ones that he did. But um, yeah, yeah. Looked upon as a bit of an, a classic, but um, for me, since I haven't really listened to a heap of this album, it's still quite fresh and new to me, which is actually good because um, I remember remember it coming out and um, just never picked it up at the time. Um, some more Rotting Christ. <laughs> so got uh, the Mighty Contract. I think this is about the third time I've owned this. Um, I had the Osmos version and there was another version as well, but selling stuff and losing things and i've just had to go through and get this again you know this is an absolute classic um it's everything seemed perfect on this one even though the production was a bit you know sort of typical in that greek sound um i i feel this is one of the better um uh examples of that production style in the early to mid 90s of greek black metal um, you know, the production on this is miles better and suits the material better than um, non Serbium. And each, you know, every song's a classic on this. Um, just really mystical, dark music, you know, um, and an absolute classic. And people see it that way. And I'm not going to um, say otherwise. And we also have Pass Passage to Arcturo, the EP prior to. The Mighty Contract. Again, this is uh, a Peaceful reissue, as is um, The Mighty Contract. Um, yeah, Qu quite different to the you know The Mighty Contract. A uh, lot more stripped back, a bit more sort of rehearsal sounding. Um, again, it's probably a bit thrashier, but the uh, the drums have got this sort of weird. Um, how would I put it? Like almost cardboard box esque sound, um, but. 
you know, the atmosphere is there. It's very occult um, sounding and you could tell how that was very influential back in the day to, you know, guys in the Norwegian scene or um, even the Swedish scene. So um, not so much, you know, I don't hear how they, you know, it's not like they went out and sounded like that, but I just the whole vibe of it, you know. Um, oh, and um, Jim Mutilator's wearing incredibly high jeans there. So um, it gets extra points for that. But yeah, an absolute classic. Um, staying in Greece, we have the Art Lord's first album, Eos for us. Um, I actually first heard the song off this. I've got to remember the song. It's, um, I can't, where is it? Uh, a call to chaos, chaos, Karavnos. I'm not going to pronounce that. It's Greek, but, um, let's just go with track five. I should have said that in the first place. Um, yeah, I'd say around 95, I had a version, uh, a issue of um, the American magazine, uh, SOD, Sounds of Death, I think it was, yeah. Um, and it came with a free Unisound sampler, and this was on it, and also um, a track from uh, Rotting Christ, Non-Serbium, and just all those you know bands that was like Mortuary Drape and uh, Necromass, some really good stuff, but yeah. That was my first exposure to these guys. I remember seeing the CD around at the shop that I used to buy stuff from. Never bought it. Um, and it's only sort of, you know, obviously I had this stuff on MB3 later. But um, yeah, Peaceville, again, come to the rescue and do good reissues with these. I think they're out on vinyl as well, but I had to snap that up. Um, I'd say a bit more thrashier than Rotting Christ and that early stuff. Again, it was recorded at the same studio as... Um, that early Rotting Christ stuff. And it's got um, Mago Swamp here, Dale Off. Looks like Themis is in this one as well from Rotting Christ. And it's got obviously Sackers from Rotting Christ and some character named Gothmog. I've uh, got the second album as well, Apollyon. This one's a bit thrashier. Um, interestingly enough, uh, Societas Satanus, uh, the track on this. Um, Rotting Christ seemed to play that live a bit. Um, but yeah, this is really cool stuff. Again, a lot more thrashier, um, but really cool stuff. Um, I really recommend Thou Art Lord to anyone into the Greek stuff. But you should know about it. Um, all right. It's the same band, so I'll do them all at once. Here we go. Um, got some uh, Destroyer albums, Destroyer 666. Um, this is a rebuy. I had the original back in the day and it got lost with a lot of other stuff. Um, I think this is like a 2012 version. Cold Steel, it was coming off the back of Phoenix Rising. Um, they went to a different studio that time. That you know, we had the, the production issues on Phoenix Rising, which um I mean Phoenix Rising's got brilliant songs. It's a great album, but the drum machine sucks. Um a good friend of mine still reckons it's got, got a drum machine on this. Um, and I was second guessing myself because I was like, oh, I think it actually is now. Whereas before it was like, uh, no, I think it's Merzis drumming on it. But um, I don't know. Let me know if it's a drum machine or what. But again, you can overlook those things if the sound, the drums suck or whatever, if the songwriting's uh, up to scratch. And this is just, you know, great songs. Um, two tracks by S. Berserker from Assaulter, you know, uh, Clenched Fist, absolutely great. I think he also done Savage Pitch, which is another absolute classic. I will not use the term banger. I will not say this slaps. I hate those terms. Um, yeah, so uh, it's got a bonus track as well called The Dragon. Um, can't recommend all the discography of Destroyer, uh, like enough. It's just great stuff. Yeah. Um, this is probably the weakest one, I think, uh, Defiance. I've never owned it before. So, yeah, getting this was the uh, first time for me. Obviously, I'd, I'd heard it. Um, they went to Necromorbus for this one. So it's got that real um, typical sound of, say, like uh, Sworn of the Dark um, production. Uh, but, yeah, it's got some pretty damn solid songs. The last track, uh, Sermon to the Dead, 
pretty different track for Destroyer at the time. Pretty melodic, but really melodic vocals. Like, um, I don't even know who does them. I don't know if it's Keith or some other guy, but um, we'll go with Keith. Uh, but yeah, really cool stuff. Um, Wildfire, which when it came out, I was really impressed with it. And then I just, I didn't end up buying it for some reason. Um, I just wasn't listening to a lot of Destroyer at that, at, at that period. Um, but this is a really cool album. There's some great songs on this. Uh, opening track, Trader, Hounds at Your Back, uh, singing about the uh, the bikey laws here in Australia. Um, what else have we got? Oh, the final track, Tamam Should. Great track. Uh, really good uh, vocal performance. Again, I still don't know who does the clean vocals. I don't know if it's uh, Keith or um, some other guy. You can't really pin down who does those great clean vocals, but if it is uh, KK Warslot, his uh, vocals have really um, developed over the years. You know, when you listen to what he did on, um, say, uh, Violence is the Prince of This World and Unchain the Wolves, to hearing a vocal performance like on Tamam Should or even on Defiance, the Sermon to the Dead. You know, it's a great vocal performance. And yeah, so I recommend that very highly. Which brings us to the new one, Never Surrender, which I've noticed on Metal Archives and stuff like that, it's been copping a bit of um, bit of flack. I love it. I think it's great. It's probably one of the better albums I've heard all year. Um, just, I think what has got me about it is that it's just a straight down the line heavy metal album. It doesn't seem to have a whole lot of thrash on it, not a whole lot of black metal. Um, I mean, it's still dark as, very melodic, great guitar solos and great guitar work in general. The guitars are all over this done in a tasteful way, not Yngwie Malmsteen wankery, but just great. It's just, yeah, I can't say a bad thing about it. The uh, only contentious thing I'd say about it would be the vocal style. There seems to be like a more, um, like a shouty sort of uh, vibe to it compared to previous um, Destroyer albums. Keith's sort of going for way more, yeah, just a shouty sort of voice. Um, he still has the rasp occasionally, but yeah, other than that. But pretty much it's just a straight down the line, good um, anthemic heavy metal album, and I can't recommend it enough. Um, the new Destroyer 666 album. All right, this one came today. Um, I was I listened to this uh, a couple of, or well, probably a month back now and then ordered it straight away because it was one of the more impressive black metal albums I'd heard this year or and for a while. And that's uh, Finnish band Black Beast with their album Arctic Darkness. Um, got to commend the uh, label on the packaging. It's a solid as fuck digipack. It's thick. It's well done, professional. Um, booklet, great pictures and whatnot. Yeah, good stuff. Um more importantly, the music is uh, great. You know, it's very, sometimes you can listen to some finished stuff and it, and it gets a bit too, you know what you're getting. It's got that ultra melodic style and it can get a bit boring. Um, with this, they sort of mesh that traditional Finnish style with um, a healthy dose of like Bathory and even some Hades from Norway. Um, some acoustic sort of flourishes and whatnot in one of the later tracks. Um even some more of the rock and roll Bathory sort of stuff. Um, even a bit of Niflheim in there. Great melodic stuff as well at times. Some nice in the background um, synths um, sort of just giving it that nice atmosphere. The band, uh, sorry, albums like In the Night Side Eclipse um, have. I'm not comparing it to that, but just I'm sort of trying to give an example of how the keyboards, when they're used, how well they're used. Um so yeah, anyone interested in a good black metal album, check out Arctic Darkness by Black Beast. For some reason, I always just think of like, um, what's that Dark Throne album? Is it Arctic Thunder or something? Yeah. Anyway, we won't go there. Great album. Um, Again, in Finland. I heard these guys on that black metal promotion uh, YouTube channel. This is probably two years ago or something. And Cryptomock. This first album really blew me away back in the day. Then I completely forgot about it. And it was only recently that I went back and um, checked it out. And I was like, why hadn't I bought this? So um, picked up 
the debut Cryptomock, which I won't be able to pronounce. And we've got Cataclysmy, the new album as well. Um, yeah, really cool. Uh, one of my favorite sort of Finnish bands at the moment, along with uh, Black Beast. Um, they just, they sort of mix it up a bit. Yeah, they're very Finnish sounding and it got that traditional sort of um, undercurrent, but they uh, have some other stuff going on and aren't afraid to sort of um, be a bit diverse without it sort of going off into post sort of bullshit. But um, yeah, highly recommend both Cryptomock albums um, if you haven't got them yet. Um, through Purity, through Fire Records, I think that's a German label. I got these through Woodcut. Um, Woodcut, um, uh, pretty much my go-to to get CDs um, these days if I want the more underground stuff. All right. We're getting to the bottom of the CDs now. Um, I've sort of just been filling in some gaps in my dissection. Um, not discography, but just collection um, around the full length. So I've already got this on vinyl, but I had to get the Passes Alive compilation of all the early stuff and pretty mandatory stuff. Um, it's got everything that they had had done prior and prior to the Sombolan, I'd say, and even some Satanized material. Um, this one's through Hammerheart Records and yeah, they did a really good job. Um, and anyone who knows me knows I'm not a massive fan of live albums. I used to love them when I was a kid. Um, they used to be the only way you could really find out how a band was live um, or just to feel like you were there. Um, so yeah, I grabbed Live Legacy, which is a really good live album. I have to give it that. And What's interesting in this one is it's got all these um, very, I wouldn't say, well, they are quite in-depth um, descriptions of the lyrics um, by John in done in 2003. But I'd say, you know, those lyrics were written in, what, 92, 93 for the Sombolane and in between that period for Storm of the Lights Bane. And he's sort of coming at them from the 2003 John, which was fully influenced by the uh, MLO, um, Temple of the Black Light sort of stuff. And I was just thinking, is it, you know, at that period, was he really heavily into that or is he just sort of pushed that um, meaning that he was at at that point onto those old lyrics? I don't know. Either way, it sort of got me thinking. But this is a cool album. Um, I wish there was more video footage of it than just that Sombolane uh, video that's on YouTube, but... Sounds great. Um, I think it was their second last gig before John went to jail. So, yeah. And then we've got the uh, 2004 live rebirth show, which, again, was a, uh, on DVD, and it's a great DVD. Um, so I was just glad to have that as a part of the collection. I do need to get that um, that box set, the tape thing, and it's just eating me alive. I really want it. And... Um, but we'll we'll see. It's going to cost me about four hundred bucks to get it from Germany if I do pull the pin on it. But um, I think if I don't get it, I will regret it. So yeah, that is the CDs. Um, sticking with that melodic section slash Swedish uh, death black metal, I had to get this, of course, the uh, reissue of the Sombolane with. <laughs> With the great pop-up, which that's not great. I don't like the pop-up. I think it's childish and unnecessary. Um, they've done a good job. That's what I'll say. The sound is fantastic. I had a, this is Black Lodge, yeah. So I had a Black Lodge um, version in, um, on vinyl that didn't even have a cover. It was just black with a red logo. And it was horrible. Like, it was crap. Um, on this... Did they need to make it a double vinyl? Absolutely not. Um, I'm pretty sure I saw a video. I can't remember if it was The Dark Path. And he, you know, made a point about how much dead space there was on these. And it's true, you know, like, I think it's the last, uh, like, side D. It's just so much space on that vinyl. And obviously, a cash grab, you know, making a, a double and they can sell it for a higher price. Um, in general... I'm very happy with this. It sounds really good. 
Um, I'm not sure what Dan Sueno did with the the remaster or whatever, but I can definitely hear the bass a lot more prominently, not overwhelmingly, but there was a certain things that I picked out um, that seemed to stand out and, and it was the bass. So um, yeah. Um, and again, great to have the, uh, the proper artwork. And now I just have to get a version of Storm of the Light Spain. Um, but that'll have to be a bootleg because I'm not forking out thousands of dollars for that. Uh, staying in Sweden. I picked up the two Sacramentum albums that I didn't have on record. The Coming of Chaos and by Black Destiny. Um, I'm probably in the minority. I was going to say the majority. The minority where I think I like this era of Sacramentum better than the uh, debut album, which I've really grown to enjoy. And I think it's like a really good example of um, melodic Swedish black and death, death and black metal. Um, but I I just find this a lot more interesting, this style, um, particularly Thy Black Destiny, just that amalgamation of, of, you know, the death and black metal, but going in a more death metal sound. I also like the Andy LaRock um Lost Angered production. I think that's that was the name of the studio back then. Um, yeah, so glad to have these. Sacramentum, you know, they're, they've been a band that I've sort of um, neglected for years. You know, in the 90s, I didn't want to borrow them because I just thought them and a lot of other bands were just uh, ripping off dissection and poorly. But the older I've gotten and gone back and listened to to them, that they're, they're, they're not that. They're a lot better. Not better than Dissection, but they're better than what I thought they were. Um, and these are really cool albums. All right, that concludes the collection update. So um, anyone who watched, I uh, thank you very much. And yeah, I'll do some more videos. See you later.